And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be in a Martian mining colony. We're going to be doing all sorts of illegal activities. We're trying to gain reputation of one of the three factions that roam this colony and kind of police it. Uh, but at the same time, we can be on our own and try to get gain our own infamy and be our own person and win that way. And we're going to be collecting weapons or data or compounds. So we're going to be going off and completing missions by doing this. We're going to be bribing people to get some information and getting some resources from them. In this fun game of Infamy by Mercury Games, it plays three to four players. It plays in just about 60 minutes, just like the box set. Very close to that. Wow, great artwork. I'm getting too far ahead. I'm already loving this game. So let's check it out. I'll show you how it's played, and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. In Infamy, you are a freelancer on Mars trying to either gain up to 15 Infamy on your own or you are trying to gain 5 reputation in any of the 3 factions that are on the planet. And you'll be doing this by bribing contacts to get resources. You'll be going to different sectors to also get resources or complete some of these missions which will gain you Infamy or reputation. So let's talk about how round works. At first someone is given this awesome first player sort of trigger man marker. One of the coolest first player markers I've seen in a game. It actually fits really well in your hand too. Very interesting. So this gets given out and we'll start the first round. Each round consists of both a day and a night phase. Uh, each day and night has three phases within it. So we have a contact phase where we'll be bribing people and getting resources. We'll have a sector phase where we will be going into the board and getting resources and completing missions. And then we'll have a scheme phase where we can sort of play some sort of cards and then clean things up for the next round. That happens day and then that happens night. So let's talk about this in more detail. In the contact phase, five new contacts are placed on the board up there by contacts one through five. Then the person with the trigger, uh, trigger man gets to move one of these watchdog tokens to one of the sectors. This means that this sector cannot be entered in later in this phase. First round, that's done by random. So let's say this, is, this was how the contacts were laid out and we start from left to right, contact one. The person with the trigger, uh, the trigger man would get first up to be able to try to bribe this person for whatever the reward is here. So in this case, the reward, this person, the cloner, gets you a, uh, a henchman, if you will. And so the person who has the trigger uh, would have to, we have bribes here. Everyone starts with 12 of these. And these 12 bribes have to last you through an entire bidding of contacts during the day and then an entire bidding of the contacts through night. So essentially there's gonna be a total of 10 different contacts that you'll have the opportunity to bid on with only 12 bribe markers. Now every time you bribe somebody, the first thing you have to do is pay expenses. So you would uh, exhaust it there and then bribe however many you want. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna bribe this guy for, for one. Now the next player in order from the trigger man gets to do the same thing. He can pass or he can try to up the ante. And again, he has to pay his expenses and maybe he goes two. And then the next two players pass, it's back to the blue player. The blue player does want to outbid him. He always has to pay expenses every time he bids. And then maybe he does two more. So now he has a total of three. Yellow has a total of two. And yellow decides, eh, it's not worth it for me, you can have it. So what happens is all the bribes that the blue person used to get this get spent. The expenses spent by the person who lost the bid stay spent, but the two that were on here that did not get used, go back to him and he can use these later this round. So these are unspent and all these are spent. And your little individual player board that everybody has has little spots for certain things. For example, the henchman I got would go here where the henchman's kept and my, my uh, available bribes would go here and my spent bribes would go here and you kind of keep everything nice and organized. The person who won that last bribe gets the trigger man and they get to be the first person to bid on the next contact. Now the peddler, for example, if you win him, you would get one of the three different resources in the game, compound, data, or weapons. And so that would go on for him. And similarly, the arms dealer, the person who won him would get two weapons, the hacker would get two data, and the liaison would give you either two infamy or one respect in a faction of your choice. So essentially giving you some, some straight scoring points. So at the end of the contact phase during the day, it might look like this. Blue has won this guy, yellow, 
pink, brown, and then blue won this. You can win as many contacts as you want, but you only have a finite number of 12 bribes for each day and night uh, phase. We then move on to the sector phase. Each person has the same six sector cards, which essentially has the number and the name of the six sectors on the board. Each person secretly takes one of their cards and is the place where they want to go that round, and they'll put it face down. Once everybody has placed their sector cards face down, everybody flips them up, and then we resolve them. Things get resolved in the sector phase in order from contact order. So whoever won the first contact gets to go first, which would be the blue player. The blue player can place in any one of these sectors that does not have a watchdog in it, unless they have a card that allows them to go there. And in each sector, you could do a few different things. One, in every sector, you can complete a mission. A mission card might look something like this. It tells you it's called Network Crash. You have to go to Sector 2's mission spot to be able to claim it. You also need to have two compound and two weapons to do it. And then you get, if you're able to do that and you go to the mission spot, you'd get a reward. If you have completed a Carnage mission, gain one respect in the cartel or the militia, one of these two factions. Now, when you also do this, you get a reward. You get one respect in either of these two factions. You get to choose which one that is. And you get three infamy. So my player board, if I had completed this mission, I would give these resources back to the general stash. And then I could pick which one of these two factions that's on this card I get respect in. So I could move this up to one, or I can move that to, this up to one. Now on this player board, again, you, get, you win if you get to any five, fifth level of any one of these. But as you move up to different levels, you get new uh, abilities. For example, if I did this, I get to gain one weapon anytime I sabotage a mission. And those are usually done by those scheme cards. Uh, the hood, if I gain, I gain one compound for each contact you resolve after the first phase. So I would get every, any, uh, bri any contact that I bribed more than one person, I would get an, an additional compound each time. And you can see as the powers go up, they get pretty powerful. Uh, so, you know, if, if we move all the way up to here, we would get one henchman for each uh, mission of this faction that we completed. Uh, for this one, you may play one additional scheme card during the scheme phase. So as you're moving up, you're getting more and more special abilities depending on the faction that you're kind of choosing to move up in. So each sector has its own mission spot that you can go to to complete any of those missions. They also have what we call resupply zones. Let's go with the basic ones. So if I were to go to, if I had put up card number one and I was going there, I could go to one of these two resupply zones. Uh, if I go here, I could easily take one compound, same at this spot. Here, one of these two spots, I could take one data. These two spots, I could take one weapon if I went to either of those. If I went to either of these two spots, I could get one of those henchmen we talked about. The other three spots are interesting. They're, they have the logo of the faction. So what happens if, if you go to that faction and you do not have any rep yet in that faction, you can move it up from zero to one. If you already have one, that's when you get to take one of the scheme cards. So you would take a scheme card from one of those factions and be able to play it later in the phase. Each faction sort of has its own personality. The cartel is good at stealing resources from players, and it's good at uh, recovering your, your, your spent bribes. So in this case, you could steal a compound from a player, and you could play one additional scheme card. Uh, a, a rival must spend two of their bribes if you have a completed underworld mission. Recover three of your spent bribes, and players with rep and cartel gets one compound. So these are the types of things scheme cards do. And as you see, there's one of those headquarters for each of the three factions. And the last spot is this one, which allows you to recover three spent bribes during the day phase or gain one infamy in the night phase. So everyone takes their turn, putting their person in order from, from, which, from, their, from uh, who owns it from left to right. And people would be going to different spots. Now, each spot can only have one person. So if someone were to complete a mission here, nobody else could go in this spot this turn. So everyone goes there and then resolves what their space does. Next is the scheme phase, which then allows in order from trigger man and then going clockwise, gets to play one scheme card. They can play more if they have a card that lets them do that. Everyone plays a scheme card and resolves it. And then we refill any open missions that may have been uh, completed that round. Um, and we pretty much get ready for the night phase of this round. Now during the night phase, the same thing happens. Now remember, the person who has the trigger man gets the bid first, and this was the person who won the last contact in the, in the day phase of this turn. And so people would go around dealing on the next five contacts. There's a total of 13 contacts, so every day night phase, there's always gonna be three of them by the end of the night phase that have not been there. And then they get randomly shuffled before the next day phase, so you never know exactly which three are not gonna be in the day or night phase of any given turn, and you resolve this just like the day actions. And since this is the night of the same turn, 
Um, you've started with 12 bribes and any of them that you use in the day phase are, have been spent, you can't use. And so now you have whatever's left in your, uh, your bribe population to be able to use for this round. At the end of the night phase, you'll end up getting all your bribes back for the beginning of a new day. When dealing out the, day, the contact cards, there's a little icon here to let you remind you whether you're in the day or the night phase. So the bidding in the sector phase plays just like the day phase. And again, here's the open missions that are there. You have one mission here for each of the amount of players. And here's a sample of some of the missions. Uh, in this case, assassinate the CEO. You need two compound, two weapons, and a henchman. You'd get one rep in either of these factions uh, and four infamy. And freelancers with rep in the megacorp faction gain one rep in that faction. Uh, off Shadow Boss, two data, two weapons, and one henchman gets you one rep in either the Megacorp or the Militia faction and for Infamy. And Freelancers with Rep and Cartel gain one rep and Cartel. Monopolize, four compound and one henchman. Uh, you gain one favor, which we'll talk about in just a moment, and one rep in the this uh, cartel faction and for infamy. We talked about favors a few times. What these favors do, they look like this, is when you're bidding for a contact in the contact stage, you simply pay one expense, put a favor down, you automatically win that contact because they owe you a favor. It's a very powerful way to win a contact and can help you a lot during the game. So the night phase plays very similar to the first the day phase. Um, you know, obviously you have less bribes to bribe contacts with because the ones that were using the day phase you can't use then. And then after the during the scheme phase, after people have played scheme cards, the big difference is for every uh, two henchmen rounding down, you get one point. And these don't get spent when you get those points; they stay there. So you can start g gathering many, many henchmen. In this case, I would get one infamy, but you can imagine as you start getting three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these henchmen, and they start compounding each time, and you get more infamy. So in this case, I would easily just get one. Uh, infamy for having those three henchmen. And these day and night turns continue over and over until either one player has gotten 15 infamy or one player has gotten five of any of the three factions. And then in the scheme phase, there's a certain section that you check for winners sort of at the end of each round there. And the one who gets to 15 first or the one who gets to five first is the winner. Oh, infamy. We really liked this game. I did. Oh, ver on the verge of loving this game. Gosh, there's so much to like about it. Um, the artwork is superb. It's just, it's really awesome. Top-notch components. That little, that little gun, the trigger man thing is just so cool. It just fits right in your hand perfectly. The mechanics, just the way that the phases work with the bribing the different contacts makes thematic sense. We're there, we're bribing people to get actions or get them to do things for us. Um, and we're spending expenses because it costs money to bribe people and you know, as you use those bribes, you kind of, you know, you, you have to figure out what you're really shooting for because you only have 12 bribes for both day and night. So you're going to be bribing or looking at 10 of the 13 contacts before you get your bribes back. So you really have to figure out, you have to think that turn and you have to think at least one turn ahead to figure out where you're going. You're looking at the missions, you're looking at what you need, you're looking at what your other people need. It's not just this solo, solitaire Euro game. You really have to interact with what the other people are doing, pay attention to what they're doing. You may see that someone's about to complete a mission and you can go to that sector. So hey, let's bribe someone early in the contact, maybe contact number one, so that I can go there first and complete the mission before them. Or maybe, I know that they're gonna do it next turn. So I bribe the last contact so that I have the trigger man so that I'm the one that moves the watchdog to the area that they're gonna be moving to next turn and totally screw them up. So there is a lot of that interaction with the players. I love the idea of those bribes being spent. So you, it's really a finite number and everybody has the same amount. Uh, getting all the different resources and doing the different missions is cool. I love the, the three different factions idea. There's so many different strategies and so many different areas that you can use paths to victory in this. And each of those factions, wow, they have their own. Every, every time you get a reputation, you get a new ability that matches sort of the personality of that. Those scheme cards, gosh, each of those keep in that personality, whether you want to be the cartel and steal things or be able to turn over bribes, or whether you want to be militia and be sabotaging people's missions. They sort of take on their own personality. It's really cool. So you can go up that route, or you can just go on your own and do a couple of random missions and try to gain a bunch of henchmen and try to win with infamy. There's just, it's just an awesome type game. And you know, they're always really close. Everyone's gonna win within like one turn of each other. It's just an awesome game with a lot to think about, a lot to look at your other players. 
gosh, it was a lot of fun. I cannot wait to keep playing this one. This, oh wow. You know, Mercury Games is a company we're going to have to keep an eye on coming out soon. You know, they came out with Quarantine earlier this year, which was awesome. This game's awesome. You don't want to keep your eye on Mercury Games and see what they do in the next couple of years. Infamy is definitely one you want to check out. This game is great. Hey, one more thing before you go. If you're about to drop a comment on this YouTube page for this video and you're expecting interaction or a personal response from me, uh, I recommend the place to do that is at my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash thegameboygeek because I don't get notified when YouTube videos get comments on the Dice Tower Network because I don't own the channel. So if you want to interact with me directly, I'll see you at my Facebook page. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Oh.